Hi everyone, welcome to the final part of course 4A on clustering techniques. In this final part we will uh, develop the modularity measure. If you remember we needed a measure to, to tell us two things. First, where to stop the clustering process of clustering techniques and uh, second, what alternative to choose when we have several choices to merge or split some clusters. For these two questions, we, will, we can use modularity as an answer. Modularity is a measure of the quality of a clustering. A good clustering is when clusters are dense inside the clusters and loosely connected between the clusters. So the modularity has to re reflect this idea of being at the same time uh, densely connected inside every cluster and loosely connected between uh, different clusters. So optimizing modularity is about maximizing intra-cluster connectivity and minimizing inter-cluster connectivity. Let's see how the modularity is calculated. We introduce a couple of notation. So uh, we have a graph J, uh, a graph G between uh, V vertices having E edges. A clustering C is constituted of C1, C2, C3, etc. until CP clusters. A and B are two nodes of G. Uh, WAB is the weight of the edge between the node A and B. And CI and CJ are two clusters of C. C is the clustering of G. So, modularity is about intra clusters and inter clusters connectivity. Let's introduce a notation of clusters connectivity. So the notation epsilon i and j stands for the sum for of w a b the weight between the nodes a and b. A is a node uh, that is in the cluster c i and b b is a, is every node in the cluster c j. So we sum for every couple a and b a being in c i and b being in c j the weights omega of a and b and we call this quantity epsilon ij. This leads to two special cases. The first special case is epsilon ii. This means that the node a and b are inside the cluster ci. So epsilon ii is the total weight of links inside ci. This is the intra-cluster connectivity. The second special case is the sum of epsilon i and j for every j being different of i. This is the total weight of links outside CI. This is the intercluster connectivity of CI. In this little example, let's say that this cluster is CI. The intracluster connectivity will be 5 because there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, links between the nodes of CI. And the intercluster connectivity will be 2 because there is 2 and the edge is 1, 2 between CI and the other clusters. If you remember, optimizing a modularity is about maximizing the intra-cluster connectivity, so maximizing epsilon ii, and minimizing the inter-cluster connectivity, so minimizing the sum of epsilon i and j for every j different of i. When we want to maximize and minimize uh, two quantities at the same time, this is the same thing as maximizing their difference. So maximizing epsilon ii and minimizing the sum of epsilon ij for j, being, uh, for j different of i is the same thing as maximizing this difference. And we want to do this for every cluster ci of uh, the clustering of j. So we want to maximize this quantity for every ci uh, of the clustering C. And this is what the modularity uh, is about. So the modularity of a clustering C, of a graph G, will be defined as capital QC equal to the sum for i ranging from 1 to p of epsilon ii minus the sum for every couple i and j uh, in the interval 1 to p i being different of j of epsilon ij. You recognize here the intra-cluster connectivity and you recognize there the inter-cluster connectivity. 
there is alternative notation or uh, definition of modularity, for example, using the intracluster degrees or intercluster degrees, also called internal degree or external degree. So if you define the internal degree of a cluster CI to be epsilon ii, and the external degree of a cluster CI to be the difference between the sum of epsilon ij for every j minus epsilon ii, you can, uh, you can show that capital QC is a modularity is also defined as the sum for every i ranging from 1 to p of the internal degree of ci minus the external degree of ci. So that's it for the mathematical definition of a modularity of a clustering. So to, to conclude, uh, we will show how the modularity is used to guide the clustering algorithm between uh, the different alternatives and um, to, to say where to stop the clustering process. So we will use a graphical representation of the clustering process as a tree. In this tree, uh, the node of the tree will be some uh, clusters. And uh, the tree is hierarchical, so every level of, uh, of the tree will be a clustering level the node or clusters and the edge between clusters are operation of merging or splitting clusters. So with this uh, particular representation of the clustering process, we will see how, uh, where the modularity is used. So let's say that we have uh, several nodes here in the, in the bottom of the picture. So we will take as an example an agglomerative a clustering process, so a bottom-up process. So at the bottom we have some nodes and we can make a first level of clustering. That is to say we, we define four clusters A, B, C and D and we say okay uh, these clusters contain the node here, here, there and there. Okay, so we have the bottom level of nodes and a first level, the clustering level 1. We can uh, merge these uh, four clusters, A, B, C, D, into uh, different clusters of a higher level of clustering. So clustering level 2 can be defined as the cluster, let's say, for example, A and B merged and uh, C and D merged. But we, can, we have different possibility of merging these clusters. So we can also consider, for example, B and D to be merged together and A and C to be merged together. So, this makes three possibilities of merging A, B, C, and D. So this is the first possibility, A, B, and C, D. This is the second possibility, A, C, and B, D. And this is the third possibility, A, D, and B, C. And we don't know which is the best way uh, of merging clusters A, B, C, and D. And this is why we use the modularity. We will use the modularity to, comp to calculate the modularity of the blue clustering, the purple clustering and the orange clustering, and decide which is the best. So, in fact, we have, uh, theoretically, five modularity to compute. The modularity of the top uh, aggregation of clusters, of the whole graph, the modularity of the purple way of merging cluster, of the orange way and the blue way, the modularity of the clustering level 1, uh, being A, B, C, and D, and the modularity of the singleton clusters, which is the lowest level of clustering, uh, of the node level, in fact. It's uh, singleton clusters or clusters with only one node inside the clusters. And to decide which is the best, we just compute the modularity and take the highest value uh, to be the best clustering. In fact, uh, you don't need to consider the clustering of the whole graph or the singleton clusters because there is as many clusters as nodes in this level and only one cluster in this level, so this is not useful. So in fact, you just have to, to compute the modularity of these four uh, clusters sorry, and uh, decide which is the best uh, using the modularity value. Okay, that's it for um, the the part on clustering techniques. So um, remember that clustering is uh, quite challenging um, because a research space for large graphs can be very, very uh, huge. So sometimes to reduce the computation cost, we will use uh, heuristics and strategies such as always choose the best amelioration of Q, 
the modularity. Uh, you can um, use optimi optimization techniques uh, such as simulated annealing or genetic algorithm, which are uh, general techniques of optimizing a measure. Um, you can also use alternative measures. The most current is modularity, but you can also try to optimize vertex similarities, pass lengths, distances between the clusters, and so on. Uh, you can refer to this uh, publication, which is a, a very good uh, review of these different techniques. So always pay attention to uh, the computation cost. And uh, since you have a lot of variants to, to, uh, to cluster a graph, um, please remember to compare the performance of these techniques uh, against the same set of data and decide uh, which is which seems to be the best uh, techniques for your case for your question of uh, for your research question and don't forget don't forget to make a qualitative assessment of results uh, clustering algorithm or just algorithms they cannot uh, decide which is a good level of cluster of clustering for you so if a cluster uh, algorithm gives you uh, 50 clusters this is too um, the clusters are too, are too are too small you have to to merge them uh, qualitatively in order to have uh, some good catalog categories to answer your research questions you can refer to this um, publication which is a comparison of seven clustering techniques on the same set of data so yeah, that's it for the course we saw a brief recall of clusters definition we saw what were the different clustering techniques and we saw how to calculate the modularity. Thank you.